Before I call the honourable member for Doe Bell, I remind the House that this is the honourable member's first speech, and I ask the House to extend to her the usual courtesies. The question is that the address be agreed to. The member for Doe Bell. Thank you, Mr Deputy Speaker, and congratulations on your election. Today I'd like to begin by acknowledging the traditional owners of the land on which we meet, the Ngunnawal and the Ngambri people, as well as those of the electorate I have come to represent, namely the Dark and Young and the Gringai people. I'd like to recognise the contribution of my predecessor, Mrs Karen McNamara, the former member for Dobell, and thank Mrs McNamara for her good wishes. And on behalf of the people of Dobell, I'd like to share our special appreciation for the first and longest serving member for Dobell, Minister in the Keating Government and my friend Michael Lee, yeah. who was and is a strong advocate for our region. Thank you for being here, Michael. I also acknowledge my friend and Central Coast colleague, Senator Deb O'Neill, who has joined us on the floor. To Ben Morton, the member for Tangi, even though we may be seated on opposite sides of the House, I have to say that it feels really good knowing there's another kid from Wyong here with me today. <laughs> I have always been part of a tribe, the second of eight McBride kids, five boys and three girls. It was the day-to-day -day negotiations of who was going to clean up the kitchen that taught me the value of acceptance, tolerance, perseverance and the very literal meaning of not blowing up the place. <laughs> Growing up, my family moved around a lot, changing school seven times. I was lucky enough to live in the inner west, western Sydney and Nauru, which, looking back through the eyes of a six-year-old, was a tropical island paradise, before finally settling on the central coast. When I first came to the coast, it was the late 1980s. Big hair was in, acid wash jeans were must-have items, the Parramatta Eels were winning premierships, and John Farnham, you're the voice, was the number one hit. I can still remember how alive I felt going for morning surfs at Soldiers Beach before school with my dad and my brothers. With the sun slowly rising from the east, cool sand under our feet and crashing waves around us, We'd jump on our boards and plunge headfirst into the vast salty water of the Pacific Ocean. Later, those surfing trips we went on when we first moved to the coast would become analogous to how we lived our lives as adults, bold, confident and free. Like so many young people on the coast in the 1990s, I had to leave the area to study. At the time, we didn't have a local university I could attend to gain the skills and training I so badly wanted and needed to become a pharmacist. My friends and I didn't have local jobs to support us through our years of training or even the option to come back and work for local industries. So once I graduated, I moved again. Throughout my 20s, I lived and worked in Forbes, North Sydney, Newtown, Berkeley Vale, Belmont and Oxford in the UK. And I would have kept moving, except that one day I got a call from my friend Tony about a job going on the coast. I packed my bags to come home. As a pharmacist, the only pharmacist in this parliament, I have had the privilege of working in health for 20 years, in mental health for 15 years, and at my local community hospital in Wyong for the last decade. During this time, I've had a front row seat to the changes that have been happening on the coast. I've witnessed the area's booming population growth firsthand and the life and energy it funnels into our community. I've also witnessed the strain these changes can place on our infrastructure and local services, the struggle of families living in suburbs and towns and villages without the ability to support their most basic needs. However, this doesn't define who we are. In Wyong Hospital Pharmacy, where despite constant pressure on the department, we worked together and commissioned the Cancer Care Pharmacy. So chemotherapy is now manufactured on site and patients, like my friend Laurie, can have treatment locally and discuss their concerns with expert oncology pharmacists. As a former councillor with Wyong Shire, where despite the budget being stretched, Working with local Labor councillors Lisa Matthews and Doug Vincent, 
we had the bonds for not-for-profits waived, so community groups like 2261 out of the box could host family feasts without someone having to put hundreds of dollars on their credit card. And as a volunteer director of Wyong Community Bendigo Bank, which felt a gaping hole left by the big four in our town, and this year again stepped up in helping to kickstart the heart, the only regional netball club in the inaugural Netball New South Wales Premier League. While modest, these achievements are examples of the type of work many thousands of people on the coast are doing each and every day to better our community. We have a population to rival nearby regions. We have the ability and the will to change our area for the better. And we, as a, as a group, have decided that now it's our time to thrive. In much the same way that I am no longer the person I was all those years ago, Dobell is not the same as it was in the 80s or the 90s. To many people, the electorate is nothing more than a name on a list and a set of lines on a map. But to me, my family and our friends, it is our hometown. It's the bustling beachfront cafes at Wombrel, busy cycling tracks around the Tugra Lakes, the beautiful red gum walking trail in the Warrabalong National Park, the charm of the rural townships of Duralong and Cedarbrush, where my great-great-grandfather was a pioneer, and the region's natural beauty that first drew us to the coast, and it's a reason we never want to leave. The population that once sat just under 200,000 has grown to 330,000 and is soon to be a booming 400,000, the ninth largest urban centre in Australia. Our region now boasts 21,000 local businesses, a university, major teaching hospitals and a growing number of new homes. Our proximity to major cities, population and growth have turned a former holiday destination into a serious regional player and a community with a powerful voice. Yet sitting alongside the overwhelming natural beauty of the region and the energy and vitality of its people is a jarring social reality, the harsh truth of disadvantage. Unemployment and a lack of local jobs are real and persistent problems. The coast's greatest strength is its people. Dobell is an area with one of the highest populations of young people in the country which means we have, the great, we have a great potential for developing tomorrow's leaders. However, the latest jobs figures for the Central Coast reveal that over 16 per cent of 15 to 24-year-olds are unemployed, compared to the national rate, which sits at 12.7 per cent. That's 16 per cent too many. In an area where local jobs are limited, it is of real concern that only one in two students <coughs> have the chance to finish high school. For the many working people who call the coast home, one in four travel outside the area for work. This daily commute can take anywhere between two to four hours. Locals will tell you it hasn't really improved all that much since I was young. And it's two to four hours that people could be standing with their, spending with their friends and loved ones and not travelling for work. However, it's one thing to know the issues and another to do something about them which is one of the reasons why our region would be best served by a Labor government. Yeah. Only Labor believes in reducing inequality and promoting greater social and economic equity by providing individuals and families the tools they desperately need to make a positive change in their community. With Labor, we can help raise high school completion rates through the provision of a quality education supported by full Gonski funding. Our young people are motivated and talented and deserve the same start as all kids in life. With Labor, our business community can flourish with the support of better infrastructure and policies that attract industry and generate local jobs. Our business sector is smart, dynamic and community-minded. It doesn't need this government throwing obstacles in its path, like the NBN, the rollout of which in my region has been nothing short of disastrous. Labor created Medicare, and only Labor will protect Medicare. As a pharmacist, too often I saw patients and those that love them forced to make decisions that no one should have to make about skipping medications or pathology tests 
because they simply couldn't afford to pay. Our young people, families and elderly can and must be able to continue to access the best in healthcare rather than simply what they can afford through universal healthcare in the form of Medicare and the PBS. The last 10 years of my working life have been dedicated to Wyong Hospital, a public hospital in a low socioeconomic area that provides quality care to thousands of locals. Today, Wyong Hospital, which was built by our community, for our community and belongs to our community, is, and without any warning, slated for privatisation by the New South Wales Liberal Government. Shame. So that you can understand how important this hospital is to our community and the reason we feel it should stay in public hands, I want to share with you a little about how it came to be. In the 1950s, with a growing population and no local hospital, a group of dedicated locals banded together, fundraised endlessly and worked tirelessly to, fund, to find a community solution to a very real community problem. In fact, it was 1956 when the first Wyong Hospital Committee meeting was held and 1980 before the first patient was admitted to the newly constructed 100-bed hospital. Keith O'Connell, who was a Labor member for Peets at the time, was so impressed with the dedication of locals in support of this hospital, he said, it amply demonstrates that when we work for the community, we should not be daunted by delays, frustrations or obstacles placed in our path, as tenacity and determination will overcome such problems. In this era of patient-centred care, why are Conservative governments in such a rush to retreat from public hospitals? More than balance sheets, KPIs and so-called health outcomes, public hospitals in regional areas care for our community. They offer us hope when we're sick. They provide expert care to newborns and empower new mums. They give us a safe place to stay when we need refuge. And they are the rooms where we mourn in when we say our last goodbyes. To the residents who held Jim Carner's springtime fates, door knock appeals and cows by candlelight festivals. To the Wyong Bowling Club, RSL Club, Tukli Norival Progress Association, the Tukli Chamber of Commerce. To the Wyong Hospital Committee, Wyong Hospital Trust, Wyong Hospital Auxiliary and the Tugra Lakes Auxiliary. To the everyday members of our community who fought for almost 30 years for our hospital to be built and are now fighting to keep Wyong Hospital in public hands. I am here to tell you that I believe that Wyong Hus Hospital must stay our public hospital. Amen. I support you when you say we want to and must keep it in public hands. Whilst on the topic of health, I thought I would take this opportunity to speak about an area I have worked in for 15 years and is very close to my heart, mental health. As you may know, October is Mental Health Month. This week is Mental Health Week, and yesterday was World Mental Health Day. Each month, each week, and each day that we mark as a community to recognise mental health is important. To focus on how far we have come and how far we have to go. As a pharmacist, a mental health worker, and a carer, I will use this platform so that in future those living with mental ill health and those who love and care for them will live better. Despite the barriers broken down, the programs launched, the very modest boosts in funding, stigma persists and lives are being lost. According to the National Mental Health Commission, each year one in five Australians will experience mental illness. They go on to say, over a lifetime, nearly half of the Australian population will experience mental illness. Less than half will access treatment. The NMHC has noted that in the last decade, the number of Australians taking their own lives has increased to more than 2,800 a year. 
which is more than twice the number of people killed on our roads. This needs to change across our neighbourhoods, towns, cities, regions and across the country. So lives like that of my friend Graham aren't lost. As a young pharmacist, I took a locum post on the other side of the world and found myself working in mental health. But what made me stay was working with highly motivated and dedicated social workers, psychologists, occupational therapists, nurses and psychiatrists who, working together each and every day, could change lives. My first-hand experience working in health for almost 20 years is of hard-working and capable staff who do a great job in very difficult circumstances. In Australia today, where you were born, where you grow up, where you live, where you work and where you age matter. The social determinants of health are now well understood. However, there is a gap between the rhetoric and the reality. I would like to share with you a quote from Michael Marmot, President of the World Medical Association. Why treat people and send them back to the conditions that made them sick? When he made this observation, Professor Sir Michael Marmot was a medical student at an outpatient psychiatric clinic at the Royal Prince Alfred Hospital, Sydney. It was the 1960s and the psychiatrist at the clinic had instructed a patient to stop taking blue pills and try these red pills. Made an appointment for a month's time and sent the patient, still a picture of misery, home. Dr Marmot goes on to say that the idea that this patient was suffering from red pill deficiency was not compelling. You cannot separate a patient and their condition from life circumstances. Fortunately, our health care and mental health services have improved considerably since the 1960s. However, I was part of too many case conferences where the only option for discharge accommodation was to hand a patient a telephone book and ask them to try to find somewhere to live. This must change. In Australia, in 2016, we should not, from any hospital or any health service, discharge anyone to a car, a couch, a cave or no fixed abode. Joining me in the fight for better health care, improved infrastructure for local families and businesses and the opportunity to create a thriving local community were 300 dedicated individuals who door knocked 50,000 homes and worked tirelessly on the campaign to win back Dobell for Labor. To those who were there from the beginning for the 28-day 2013 campaign, Jay Saval and Stacey Ray, thank you. To the Labor leadership team, Bill and Tanya. To Albo for the best backyard Barbie. Tony, Chris, Jenny, Jason, Mark, Sharon, Ed and Katie for your support of the Dobell campaign and commitment to the Central Coast. To New South Wales Labor, Kayla Minane and Pat Garcia for backing talented women and men in winnable seats. Thank you. To the 2016 campaign team, David Dobson, Jack Power, Peter Duggan, Andrew Scott, Peyton roberts Garnsey, and Jack, Jake Allen, and all the Young Labor volunteers, Andrew, Jack, Edward, Josh, Vanessa, Siobhan, Dominic, Sean, Claudia, Daniel, Shane, Caitlin, Jacob, Zach, and our little Labor rising star, McKenna. We would not have been the number one Labor team for door knocks across Australia without your tireless efforts. To my Central Coast Labor colleagues, David Harris, David Meehan, Yasmin Catley, Kathy Smith, and Senator Deborah O'Neill, and Pat Conroy, I'm looking forward to working closely with you for our region. I also acknowledge Anne Charlton, Labor's formidable candidate in Robertson, who fought a tough campaign for the coast. <laughs> to Jill Hall, the former member for Shortland and tireless campaigner for our community, thank you for your enthusiastic support. To all the branch members, Central Coast Community Union Alliance and supporters across the Central Coast, I know many of you are watching with Jill right now at the Entrance Leagues Club today. Thank you. My Nana was a proud shoppie and would have been overwhelmed by the support of the union movement. To Jared Hayes and my union, the HSU, I will stand up for healthcare workers across Australia 
and in Dobell so they can care for us. To Steve Butler in the ETU New South Wales branch, to Glenn Williams and the MUA Newcastle, Tony Sheldon in the TWU, Tara Moriarty in United Voice, the ACTU and Unions New South Wales, and Sally and Mark's Not So Secret Army, Salim and Aaron, and the entire Build a Better Future campaign teams for Dobell and Robertson. To Dennis Lay, Pharmacy Guild of Australia, New South Wales branch vice president, my friend and mentor, your work over many decades with those affected by alcohol and other drugs is inspiring and saving lives. To friends and colleagues at Wyong Hospital and across Central Coast Local Health District, Sue Evans, Director of Nursing and Midwifery, David Gilbert, Deputy Director of Pharmacy, it was very difficult to leave. But now it's my turn to stand up for you and our hospital in this place. To Josh Brown for setting up the office and guiding me through these first few months, congratulations on your election to Upper Hunter Shire Council. Your community will be well served by you. A big shout out to the team in the Dobell EO, Richard, Heather, Jake, Peyton and Lisa. And we make a great team and I thank you all for your hard work. To my friends in the public gallery today, Amanda Galbraith, Pharmacy Guild of Australia ACT branch president, I was very lucky to meet you on the first day of pharmacy school. To Jo Sharp, your clinical expertise and friendship have taught me a lot. To Di Selby, the Central Coast Heart, and all my friends over 30 years of netball on the coast. Launching the Heart has been a boost to women's sport and our region, and I wish you the very best for the future. To friends who have helped me so much and couldn't be here today, Renee and Megan, your friendship keeps me grounded, and I will be back on court next season. To Roland, thank you for your calls from London. Your political insight is invaluable. I'm looking forward to you moving back home next year. To Maria, for believing in me when I doubt myself. To my parents, my mother Barbara, who is here today, and my father Grant, your love for our siblings and I know no bounds, and we are forever grateful. Many years ago, my dad told my brother Leo, you can do anything in life, but you can't do everything. We chose to have all you children over everything else. To the children who came before everything else and their families, for your support always. Will, Karen, Gabe, Gus, Isabel and Vincent. To Nick and my goddaughter Frances who are here today, Ursh, Patrick and Oscar. To Eddie, Ling, Finn and Iona. To Leo, Kel, Flo and Johnny. To Amy and Serge and Iggy and Dejana, thank you. Finally, to the Central Coast. I am humbled by your trust in me. I will not let you down. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.